So our technology is all about transplantation and there are challenges with transplantation today. One is the availability of donors of uh, donated organs. As you know, uh, for example, when we are transplanting a heart, we need a heart from a deceased donor. And there will, of course, at the end be a limitation in the number of such organs that we can use for transplantation. However, for other organs, there is a more uh, important uh, challenge and limitation, and that is about our immune system. Because when we transplant an organ from one patient to another, we will, we will have to suppress the immune system of the patient for the rest of his or her life. And that is a high price, a price that is affordable when it comes to heart and livers and kidneys, the vital organs, but for less vital organs like nerves, blood vessels and other uh, structures in the body. That price is too high and we have to find the solution. So we need a new source of transplantable organs, not only organs, but also, also organs that can be transplanted. You see here a bioprinter, you have seen that before. Is that the solution for new organs today? Well, not yet, if you ask me. So to bioprint organs will certainly be part of the future, but we are not there yet. So donation of organs is a key element in what we are doing. But again, we need to do something with the organs and we are doing that. So. To come to the point, we are not creating organs in Vergraft, we are personalizing them to um, allow um, the patients to receive these organs and to overcome the challenges and the big price to pay uh, when we have to immunosuppress the immune system. So how are we doing this? Uh, I will exemplify our technology that can be used for different tissues and organs with blood vessels. So pretend we harvest a vein from a deceased donor. So this vein is undergoing a first process called decellularization. In this process, we make this vein anonymous by taking off everything that can uh, um, uh, evoke the immune system. And that uh, these structures are cells and DNA. Then we have to enter a second process, the personalization process. And the unique with our technology is that we use blood, peripheral blood, a small sample of this blood from the patient in a process that we call personalization process. We basically soak or incubate the empty scaffold with this blood or the blood solution we have prepared with some tricks uh, that we uh, can master. So we end up with a new blood vessel that now have the identity of the patient we are going to treat. So in summary, we do this uh, because we want to take a uh, foreign or you can say allogeneic organ to become autologous to become similar to the patient's own uh, body. By doing this, we don't need any immunosuppression of the patient and we will no, not um, face into any trouble. I will come back to that. Importantly, three things. The vein scaffold after the first decellularization process can be frozen stored uh, sorry can be stored frozen for a long time for years actually so we can bank these type of structures second the personalization process is only one week long and that is in sharp contrast to all our peers and competitors that are using much more complicated costly and time consuming personalization processes and note these processes are uniquely protected by patents and trade secrets 
So uh, to cut a long preclinical story short, we have confirmed safety and um, efficacy in large animals. We are doing that together with uh, two um, good partners, University of Gothenburg and RISE, RISE, which stands for Research Institute of Sweden. So I now introduce for the first time our first product candidate with the name the personalized tissue and in it veined PTEB. So we introduced this, um, uh, these grafts in the animals in the same way as we would do in, in the humans in the future. Um, we have done this in several large animal models, short-term acute studies, long-term studies, both in mini pigs and in large pigs. We are specifically looking for rejection, occlusion, mechanical failure, infection, and those are the most important potential side effects of vascular uh, replacement therapies. We are, of course, also looking into how well these grafts are integrated into the animals. So, if you look at these two slides, this is a native uh, vein, a vena cava. Uh, on the left-hand side, you see the nuclei. On the right-hand side, you see the blue nuclei again, but importantly, the endothelial cells that are covering the inner uh, lumen of the, of the vessel. Now, you, I show you our personalized tissue and need vein. Uh, and as you can see, these veins are extremely uh, similar to the native veins. So in conclusion, uh, they are very well integrated in short time, and we basically do not see any differences between these two types of veins. Last slide of the preclinical program is a one-year study in, in pigs, and you can on the left-hand side see the angiography, uh, proving that the, the, the vessel is open. Um, in the middle, you see uh, a blood vessel taken out of the one year and cut open longitudinally, longitudinally, and you can see the shiny surface that is proving that we have um, a very uh, nice blood vessel that can uh, protect um, the patient from a, a long row of, of side effects. On the right hand side, you see a, a CD31 staining. CD31 is a specific staining for uh, endothelial cells. So altogether, these blood vessels are well integrated and uh, have the capacity and potential to, to, to stay open and functional for a very long time. So to the clinical side, our first target. Uh, in the Thai region uh, of our legs, uh, we have deep veins. These deep veins are characterized by having valves. These valves are there to, to regulate the blood pressure by allowing the blood to be pumped up by the muscle pump from the legs up to the heart, but prevent the blood from by gravity to fall down again to the feet. Uh, unfortunately for some uh, patients, uh, these valves are dysfunctional or insufficient, and this is leading to the disease called chronic venous insufficiency. These diseases are typically starting with swelling and pain in the legs, but gradually and unfortunately for the patients leading to bleeding leg, leg ulcers. So uh, why are these our first indication? Because this is um, an unmet medical need. These patients cannot um, get any curative treatment today. And we can do the trick uh, and overcome the too high price by having to immunosuppress the patient by taking a donated piece of a vein like this, containing a pair of valves, personalize this graft and make it available for transplantation. So in order to um, show you that this is not just theory, I would like to show you one of these veins. So you see uh, one vein with valves that we have personalized hang up in our very simple bioreactor device. And when I now start, you can see and probably also hear that uh, the muscle pump in the feet are pumping up the blood 
uh, and you can see the valves in the middle of the of of the of the video uh, how they are opening and closing again. So we are ready to initiate initiate clinical trials. So uh, we are a European company. Our journey is starting in Europe. So we have uh, designed the first phase one two trial uh, that is. Um, that is uh, going to take place in Spain. Uh, and as you can see, this is the first type of, um, of um, a trial of its kind in the world. So uh, we are planning to take our um, um, first product to the market by doing uh, phase one and phase two trials uh, in Europe. Uh, we think that uh, there should be enough with about 60 to 70 17 patients in Europe to get the first market approval. Uh, and in US, after discussion with FDA and uh, key opinion leaders and experts, we think that we need about 100 patients to go to the market approval. In the rest of the world, our uh, model is out licensing. So uh, to summarize with some uh, key milestones, uh, Preclinical program is completed. Manufacturing is approved by the Spanish Medicines Agency. Our first clinical trial is approved and our clinical trial program a little delayed by the pandemic, um, unfortunately, but will soon uh, enroll in Spain. So just to mention that we have a very good partner in, the, in, in Spain, uh, in Andalusia. So, um, just want to mention before we end up that we are also personalizing other um, uh, structures and organs. So we do arteries and we do nerves and that I have to tell you about another time. So um, we have um, our owners. We are also, um, we have also received some grant funding in in Vergraft, so both from national authorities as well as on the European level. I want to end up my presentation by mentioning that we are part of a, a beautiful organization in Sweden called CAMP, CAMP, which stands for Center for Advanced Medicinal Products, which is a national and governmental backed program, a five year program with the aim of taking these advanced therapy medicinal products uh, uh, to their future use uh, in medicine. Uh, we have also something in Sweden that we have branded as ATMP Sweden, and we have a very uh, high ambition of being the world leader in ATMP development in 2030. So coming to the end, I used to use a lobster. We would like to regenerate uh, the human body or at least help the, the human body to regenerate. And the analogy with the lobster is good because lobsters are very good in uh, regenerating organs um, by itself. But in the case of humans, I think we need to help a little bit. And that is what uh, Vergraft is trying to do. So with that, I would like to uh, conclude and thank you for the attention. And uh, if you have any interest in what I have told you now, you are welcome to contact me or my company. Thank you very much.